Hello everybody, welcome back to another InfoSec Operator tutorial. I hope everybody's doing well amongst this pandemic that we are going through. And to help you guys stay at home, we are going to continue learning more about cybersecurity and ethical hacking and computer technology. This is part two of the Wireshark tutorial, and today we're going to be going over different filters within Wireshark. In the last video, which is linked down below in the description and somewhere on this video, that you can click on and view. Uh, we were learning a little bit about how Wireshark is set up and kind of the user interface of Wireshark. In this one we're going to take a, a step further and start discovering exactly how uh, we can apply specific filters to get specific information out of Wireshark so we can do our information gathering portion of our ethical hacking. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Wireshark has two different types of filters. You got your display filters and your capture filters. Display filters are only concerned with what you see in the packet list. So. We'll go ahead and take a look at that here in a second, but we also have our capture filter, which go ahead, which operates on the capture and drop packets that do not match the rules supplied. Now, keep in mind that the syntax of the two types of filters is not the same. So, capture filters use a low-level syntax called the Berkeley Packet Filter, or BPF, whereas display filters use a logic syntax you will recognize from most popular programming languages, such as, I would say, JavaScript, C programming, Python, and other core programming languages that you guys um, are familiar with. So let's go ahead and open up our Wireshark program. You should have that if you watched the last video. And let's take a look here. So you guys are familiar now, or should be familiar now, with how Wireshark is set up. What to select here on our uh, capture. So this is the capture filter area. Okay, now you can start off with a capture filter. And then select which um, device that you want to monitor. Obviously, I'm going to begin with my Wi-Fi, as I don't really have much of anything else hooked up. Uh, there's no Bluetooth here or uh, an Ethernet cable plugged in, so my common one is the Wi-Fi. So you can enter capture filters here, but we're going to ignore that for now because I want to take you guys into an actual capture. And then up here is your display filter. This is kind of where we want to pinpoint a specific conversation going on between two devices. Now for our first display filter that I'm going to show each of you is we can have a specific protocol that we type into this display filter. And then you just hit enter and now we're only going to be looking at TCP conversations or the TCP protocol, transmission control protocol if you will. Uh, between some devices on the network. So, of course, we could uh, dive a little bit further, and we will uh, later on, and get a specific uh, conversation going on between the source IP and the destination IP, and vice versa. But for now, I just wanted to look at the TCP protocol on this display filter, and we're going to take a further look at what this means and what we can gather from our TCP filter. So within the TCP filter that we have set here, we can actually see something going on. The thing that we want to look at is the last two um, options within our display of the uh, of our like protocol pane here or our um, I actually forget the name of that already uh, within our packet list pane excuse me and we can actually go ahead and look at uh, these two different things here so we got internet protocol version 6 uh, the source and the destination thereof so uh, these are your IPv6 um, source and destination 
addresses, then below that we can get into the most important part, in my uh, opinion, um, of the of the capture. You got your source port and you got your destination port. Well, if you guys know anything about Kali Linux yet, and if you don't, that's okay. I'll you know make a video on that too. But uh, if you know anything about Kali Linux yet. Um, you know that you can actually start to recon um, vulnerabilities in specific ports and addresses. So, if you guys are starting to get the picture here, we can actually figure out um, that we are gathering this data from Wireshark. We can input this data into Kali Linux and start looking for vulnerabilities in anything that we are scanning with uh, within our network. Now, there's also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a way to do this on a wide area network. If you're hooked up to the uh, to a website or something like that, uh, which I will go ahead and look into and um, see if I can't get you guys that information too. But if you're sitting in a cafe or a bookstore or something and you're scanning that open um, public network that public Wi-Fi that you can hook up to for free and you just say okay you know um, I know the risks blah 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 well people actually do that uh, without knowing the true risks because as you guys are seeing here um, this is capturing everything on my Wi-Fi uh, that would include my smart TV that would include the laptop I'm using here to record this and then it's looking at what you're connecting to and how you know uh, it's connecting and is there vulnerabilities into what you're connecting to so if you guys are starting to see the whole picture here if you're thinking a little bit outside the box also within the box uh, you guys can see that I now I know that um, you know so and so device connected to port 443 which you guys are I mean, unless you're an expert NSA level hacker, you're not going to be able to um, hack a port 443 because that is a secure socket layer um, port, which means that it's on an HTTPS website and not just an HTTP website. But uh, without confusing you guys too much here, we can see the source port and the destination port. And then we can start scanning for vulnerabilities. Now, TCP is not the only filter that we can do. Um, going further into filters, we can actually go ahead and look up a specific address. So, 10.0.0. I'm royally butchering this. And you can um, look up that address by typing in IP equal equal 10.0.0.1 now if you guys know anything about networking 10.0.0.01 uh, is going to be your um, default gateway so really that's not going to do anything but let's say that you're going through all this information and you figured out a um, IP address that you want to specifically look at uh, you know you can type in IP equal equal 10.0.0.223 and see the conversation happening between that uh, device and your device or vice versa and you guys can see then that um, there's specific ports and protocols uh, that is happening um, that could that you can check out and scan for vulnerabilities so and we can of course another main protocol that I want to show you guys is ARP or address resolution protocol there's an attack called ARP spoofing or even ARP poisoning uh, where you can actually sift the information between two devices into your device and basically have it um, in plain text displaying everything happening between those two uh, devices so um, there's many attacks that we can perform here just from applying specific filters and knowing how to apply specific filters. Um, you know, we can do, uh, I'm trying to think here, we could do UDP in lowercase, UDP, and um, which is user datagram protocol. Um, that kind of is. 
it's hard to explain. It's more along the lines of, like, media coming across. I know that kind of doesn't narrow that down for you guys. Um, but it, 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 essentially anything that's streaming uh, will be uh, viewed here through the UDP. So definitely brush up on your uh, ports and protocols and what those mean. Start playing around with it on Wireshark and uh, figure out, you know, what what can you see, how far can you bend it, and then put that information, once you s capture something you think it's really interesting and you want to test it out, put it into your Kali Linux. Uh, you could end map it, and you could even pull a Sparta move on it and start scanning for actual vulnerabilities. Um, is it out of date? Is it Does it have a uh, patch that hasn't been patched? Um, all kinds of things like that. So that's what Wireshark, Wireshark won't actually hack anything, but it'll give you a very, very good information to perform a hack within Kali Linux. So guys, uh, that is our filter portion of Wireshark. In the next video, we're gonna dive down even further and start looking at how to read the devices you're seeing here, um, how to actually set up a lab in um, tracking things, uh, uh, you know that have honor that specifically have vulnerabilities and so on and so forth so guys thank you so much for watching please stay at home and go check out the facebook page linked on my youtube channel's actual page and i'll see you guys in the next video infosec operator out